Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I'll be showing you how to get the standard transesophageal echocardiography views using Virtual Echo, the echocardiography simulator. Below the video you'll find a link to our website where you can download a trial version of Virtual Echo or purchase the full version which includes the TEE module. Okay, let's begin. When you first open Virtual Echo, you'll start at the TTE screen. To switch to TEE, press E. We are now in TEE mode. Let's first get to know the controls. The TEE probe can move in many ways. As usual, these keys are listed here to the left. Now let's make the torso transparent using the T key and remove the rib cage using the R key. The first probe movement is simple. It's out and in. The corresponding keys are O for out and I for in. Let's move the probe all the way out. The second kind of movement is called the arc or the multiplane movement, which isn't actually a real movement. Nothing is moving when I use the multiplane. It's a digital movement. You can see here how the ultrasound arc rotates when I press the V key and the C key. The V key rotates the arc counterclockwise. The V is for reverse and the C rotates it back clockwise and this little number here shows you the current arc angle. The third kind of probe movement is probe rotation. On a real probe you would do this by twisting the probe with your hand clockwise or counterclockwise the way you would twist a screwdriver. On In Virtual Echo you use the Z and X keys to turn the probe to the left or to the right the next movement is called rotary movement. That means flexing the tip of the probe forward or anti-flexion, backward or retroflexion, or laterally, left and right. On a, an actual TE probe, there are two little wheels that you turn to flex the probe in these directions. Some TE probes have only one wheel and can flex only in the forward and backward directions. Typically you won't need the rotary controls except for fine-tuning until you reach the stomach, that's to say the transgastric views where they're used quite extensively. Let's use the Y button to reset the rotary first before starting. Okay, now that we have our movements, let's get down to business. As in transthoracic echo, we have a number of standard views, which we will be covering in this tutorial. And here too, you can use the G key to cycle between the guides for the standard positions. Pressing the N key will automatically move the probe to the selected position. We're not here to learn guides, however. We want to learn how to get the views ourselves. So I'll just cycle through the guides until they're gone. And let's start working. I'll pull the probe out, reset the arc, reset the rotation, and we're good to go. Now. I would suggest that you split this tutorial into three or four parts and learn a few positions each day and practice them well before moving on because we have 18 of the most commonly used positions covered in this guide and it's really easy to get mixed up. To make this easier for you I've taken the liberty of dividing the tutorial into sections and bookmark the start of each section for you in the description below. Okay, now on to the views. You have to keep in mind that since the probe is now behind the heart, what you're going to usually see at the top or at the apex of the ultrasound sector is the left atrium, which is right in front of the esophagus. The first view is actually quite easy to get and will be your starting point and landmark for the following views. It's called the mid-esophageal four-chamber view. The name is pretty self-explanatory. You advance the probe using the I key to the level of the mid-esophagus. It's usually about 30 or 40 centimeters on an actual probe. And you keep going until the view looks like this. This is called the mid-esophageal four-chamber view and you can see the four chambers of the heart side by side. Rather similar to the apical four-chamber in transthoracic echocardiography except that it's upside down. The next view is called the mid-esophageal mitral commissure. As the name implies, We'll, we're still at the mid-esophageal level, so we won't be moving the probe in or out. First, we need to make sure the mitral valve is centralized to the view. We do this by rotating the probe, in our case, a little to the left, so that the mitral valve is 
roughly in the middle of the view. And then we change the arc angle, or the multiplane angle. Use V, keep rotating, and we can until we can only see the left atrium and the left ventricle with the mitral valve lying in between. So this is now called the mid-esophageal mitral commissure view. The exact arc angle will, of course, vary from patient to patient. Uh, usually it's about 70 degrees. In our case, we have it at 50. The next view is called the mid-esophageal two-chamber view. And all you have to do to get it is simply to rotate the arc a little more. I'll press the V key and rotating the arc a little more, we get the mid-esophageal two-chamber view in which we have a clear view of the left atrial appendage, useful to check for thrombi. If we keep rotating the arc angle, about maybe 40 degrees more or so, the LVOT opens and we can see the left ventricular outflow tract and a segment of the ascending aorta in addition to the left atrium, the left ventricle, and the mitral valve. This view is called the mid-esophageal long axis view. It's kind of similar to the long parasternal view in transthoracic echo. Okay, now you need to practice these positions until you get the hang of them. Practice first with the visual aids, then blindly. Now we start the second section of the tutorial. In the previous section, we stopped at the mid-esophageal long axis view. In the next view, the mid-esophageal RV inflow outflow, we're going to move the arc to 60 degrees. Okay, so I'll press the C key to bring it back to about 60 degrees. And then we're going to rotate the whole probe back towards the RV using the X key until we have this view. So now I'm going to decrease the depth a little bit using the plus button to make the view bigger. We now have the RV inflow, so this is the right atrium, this is the right ventricle or right ventricle outflow tract, this is the pulmonary valve, and this is pulmonary artery. The next view is called the mid-esophageal bicaval. In this view we're going to crank up the arc to about 90 degrees, that's a right angle, and then move the probe further toward the right until all you can see are the right atrium and the two veni cavi. This is why it's called a bicaval view. For the next view, the mid-esophageal ascending aortic long axis view, we're going to pull the probe out a little bit. But first, we need to increase the arc angle about to about 100 degrees. I'm going to press the V key. We're at 100 now. Then we're going to rotate the probe back toward the left side. Z key, until we start to see the ascending aorta. There we go. Now we're going to pull the probe out using the O key until we have a good, nice view of the ascending aorta. So there we are. This is the ascending aorta. And this view is the mid-esophageal ascending aortic long axis. The next view is the ascending aortic short axis. Now this view is effectively a cross-section of the ascending aorta so that you see it like a circle. So quite logically, what we'll need to do is to take the arc back to zero and we now have the aorta in cross-section. If we pull the probe out a little bit, we get the ascending aorta in cross-section with the main pulmonary artery trunk and the right pulmonary artery by its sides. Now if you gradually push the probe inside and rotate the arc to 30 degrees. There we go. I actually didn't have to rotate the arc. This, if we rotate the arc a little bit, okay, we don't, we don't need to rotate the arc now because we already have the view and this view is called the aortic valve short axis view, which gives you a good look at the aortic valve in cross-section with its three leaflets. The next view is the upper esophageal aortic arch long axis. Arc back to zero. Now pull the probe all the way out until the ascending and the descending aorta fuse together into a, a tube. Move the probe towards the aortic arch, that's towards the left, until the aorta becomes centered in view. 
Now this is the aortic arch. We can decrease the depth to zoom in a little bit. And we can see here how the ultrasound sector cuts the arch in long section. The next view is the upper esophageal aortic arch short axis. Just rotate the arc to 90 degrees using the V key and we have sorry 90 degrees and we have a cross section of the aorta. If I move the probe a little bit towards the left I can also see the origin of the left common carotid artery. For the next view, the descending aortic long axis view, we're going to keep the arc at 90 and turn the probe far to the left. I use the Z key. Turn all the way until the aorta is a long tube. Here's the aorta. And then I'm going to advance the probe until the aorta becomes a long tube. Now can I, I can inspect almost the whole length of the descending aorta. The descending aortic short, short axis is the same but with the arc at zero. So I'm going to take the arc back to zero and now I have the aorta in cross section. I can go back and see what this looks like. This is how it is. And by moving the probe in or out, let me zoom in, I can inspect the whole length of the aorta in cross section. This concludes the second section of the tutorial. Practice these views before moving on. As we said, practice them first with the visual aids on and then remove the torso transparency and try getting them blindly. The next and last set of views are called the transgastric views. In these views, the probe is advanced further down to reach the stomach. The first view is called the transgastric mid-short axis. Let me first take the probe back to neutral rotation. I'm going to increase the depth a little bit get the whole view and then I'm going to start advancing the probe using the I key. Let's get a good view of the probe as it goes into the stomach. I press the I. I keep advancing the probe until I can no longer see the heart. Then I use the rotary controls to look up, flex the tip of the probe upward so I can get a cross section of the heart. I need to rotate the probe a little bit using the X key to center the view and I can use the rotary controls to flex the probe laterally so that my view is a good proper circle. By flexing the tip of the probe backward and forward I can look at different segments of the heart. I can look apically or I can look at the level of the mid cavity at the level of the papillary muscles this view is called the transgastric mid-short axis and flexing the probe further up okay, will get us the level of the mitral valve showing both mitral valve leaflets as they open and close and this view is called the transgastric basal short axis view. Moving on to the next view let's first center the view a little bit and we're going to rotate the arc angle until we cut the LV like this and we can see the left atrium left ventricle with the mitral valve between and this view is called the transgastric two chamber view now for the next view you can either increase the arc angle further or rotate the whole probe to the right I'm going to increase the arc angle until I can see the LVOT and a part of the ascending aorta and this view is called the transgastric long axis. So left atrium, mitral valve, LV cavity, LVOT, aortic valve, ascending aorta. Now rotate the probe further to the right using the X key and increase the arc angle if necessary. We don't need to do that here until you can see the tricuspid valve. This view is called the transgastric RV inflow. This concludes our tutorial. I hope you found it useful and educational. This tutorial was made with Virtual Echo, the echocardiography simulator, and goes to show you just how easy to use and yet powerful Virtual Echo can be. No need for expensive equipment or real patients when you're still learning. Just use Virtual Echo to practice first and then move on to real patients when you're ready. 
If you're already an experienced echocardiographer, you can see the appeal in using virtual echo to explain to your students or to make tutorials such as this one, or even better. Thank you for watching. You can download or buy virtual echo at medicalworkseg.com slash virtual echo. The link can also be found below the video in the description.